YouTube family. Monique is not playing. Monique and her husband, a.k.a. Daddy, they speak again about the D.L. Hughley situation. And D.L. is for don't lie. Not down low, but don't lie, Hughley. Hughley has responded. She's responded. Her daddy responded. Pause. We're going to get her to break down all the situations. We've been seeing a back and forth between these two comedians. We've been seeing families being attached where people are talking about people's daughters and trauma situations of that. So said daughter. We've been seeing allegations of mismanagement, funds, money, rumors, gossip about sexualities, manhoods, everything you can see. We done seen the most. I'm about to fall back and let Monique talk to y'all, man. I need y'all to hit that like button. Hit that notification bell, rock out Osmo Hip Hop Live, and salute. What does this have to do? You're going too far. What does this have to do with your contract? Let me tell you what it has to do with my contract. Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. It has nothing at all to do with my contract. What it has to do with is the character of the man named D.L. Hughley. That's what this has to do with. And let me acknowledge, D.L. Hughley did apologize. He said he apologized. And y'all are saying, Monique, he owned his mistake. Let me say this to you. Though he owned it, it does not erase the trauma. And when we talk about the character of the individual, for years... For years, D.L. Hughley has given his commentary and his opinion on other people's lives, not just mine, for years. And he would give the ins and outs. Hold on. Well, let's do it. Comments. Let's do it. No, okay. just. It was A bitch is going back to the Fox Theater in motherfucking Detroit. When I tell you Detroit, y'all don't understand what the fuck I had to go through to stand in front of you beautiful motherfuckers tonight. Y'all don't understand the fight a bitch had to go through to stand in front of y'all tonight. Y'all don't understand how the to walk me, Is it okay to re-traumatize his daughter? Listen, y'all, let's stop playing this game. There's nothing I could say or do to re-traumatize that baby because the trauma has already set in. However, if we speak it out loudly and we say it to our community, maybe the next baby won't have to deal with the goddamn trauma. See, when I made that post, it was intentional. It was intentional. It was intentional. And let me say this too. When we speak about the character, we don't know D.L. Hughley in the totality to speak about his character, but what we know is about his actions. So what we can say reasonably and factually is that when you have a man that said, essentially, that he didn't do right by his daughter, that seemed to me that it would create a level of humility that you wouldn't go after other people so vehemently in the manner that you do. So that... That's the moment when humility steps in and say, I have my own demons to deal with. There, DL told the story. What I did was posted the story to say, look at the character of the man. And that's- Look the, at the actions. The actions of the man. See, what happens is y'all, when you listen to this man speak so much about Kanye West, and how he's stalking this woman and all that he's doing and didn't understand that man was trying to protect his babies. You spoke, and if you did that to my daughter, I would do something about it. Well, you're talking with a... I actually agree with Monique. D.L. Hughley should have never speak on Kanye West trying to get his wife back or defending his kids. D.L. Hughley called Kanye West a stalker. No, sir, you're probably a stalker. Mind your own business when it comes to other people's marriages. I agree with Monique on that, and it seems like people are picking side, and nobody called out D.L. Hughley for, you know, saying that. It looks like Kanye almost made his homies give D.L. a two-piece. You know what I mean? And no biscuits. Full time. Because something was done to your baby. And when people said, oh, do you speak for all black women? Don't speak for all black women. She's speaking as a black woman for the trauma that black women had. Of the black man and black woman sitting together, let's make it a commonality. 
Let's not make it so that it's so odd to see. Because what she's saying is you are worthy as a black woman of being treated equally. You are worthy as a black woman of being treated fairly. You are worthy of a, as a black woman not to allow yourself to be beaten and allow the beater, the person who violated you, to get away with what it is that they've done. An apology erased the trauma. And that's not as much the issue about the apology. Come on. In conjunction with the trauma. And when you say you're bringing his daughter into it, what his daughter is getting right now is someone that's in alignment with her as a black woman who was abused by her brother. So that everything she has felt and everything that she feels moving forward, she knows that it's a level of confirmation because no one knows what it is that that sister went through. Let every last one of them tell them what their problem is with me. And what you'll find is with every last one of them, they try to bully or either talk foolishness and they got it handed back to them and they could not handle it. Get them all together. And they point out all the people that she's had a problem with. But what they fail to mention is the details of why she has a problem with them yeah. and why they have a collective problem. Let's delve into the specifics because we as a community, we get caught up and we buy into generalities like a deal memo. People, woo, boom, bang, bang. Oh, he done <laughs> dropped the bomb. He got a nail. He got a nail. A deal memo with no signatures, but y'all going to question her contract because it came from our turn. Well, oh, that healing start feeling so good because I was able to say it out loud and not sleep with it. I was able to put it on stage and not bring it home to my family. So when y'all tell me about what I should and shouldn't say on stage, that's mine. That's mine, baby. And I'm going to say what I want to on that stage because that's also my therapy. That's the pastors preachers they tell you if you want re-editing right on the spot for quick praying on you mm. now i know people really gonna be on up in arms about that because don't take away our god We're not taking away your god we're taking the illusions that have been imposed upon you about the things that surround you every day. Be comfortable in the truth. Because if you don't become comfortable in the truth, then that means you're becoming comfortable on the opposite. That's why you have a problem with what we're doing right now. And it's your right. And if you have a problem with the content that we sharing, my sweet baby, click off. Click off. See, here's where we get foolish. And I want to address this too because somebody said they didn't come for that. They came for a comedy show. Well, then you must have been blind and deaf. Because if you look at the video, them people was having a ball. I'm grateful when I walk. The fuck up out of here, but I said I can't let the people down of motherfucking Detroit because the promoters as raggedy as a motherfucker. I don't fuck with nobody. See, tonight, I'm gonna tell y'all what the fuck is going on because y'all know one thing about me, bitch, I'm gonna tell. <laughs> I fuck with contracts. I said a motherfucking woman if I didn't let y'all know what the fuck was going on on this stage right now. And the headliner, that's what the motherfucking contract said. Is the headliner, that's what I signed the but a nigga named Dale Hughley turned into a bitch and said, I won't perform if she does that. I won't go out if she does that. Nigga, you walked out on that stage in Detroit. Them beautiful folks stood to their feet. And when I left that stage in Detroit, those beautiful folks stood to their feet. So let me do my show the way I do it. And if you don't like that kind of show, and you would be a baby that would never buy tickets. 
we're, we're on equal ground. But when you come to my show, I've always talked about my life. And those people welcome themselves into my life. For all those people that y'all got listed, I didn't call not one of them. Every last one of them called on me. So what happens is, my sweet people, when the powers that be, whatever that means, they've gotten so used to praying upon us because they know we, what you're going to do. You ain't going to do nothing. There are some men, not all, not all, but there are some black men. Again, let me say it, not all because there are some beautiful black men out there. But there are some black men like D.O. Hughley that like to pray on us. And when you turn it around. And by praying, meaning I can say what I want to say to you. Come on. But I'm going to need you to have empathy for me when the tables are turned. Because when we start speaking about the whole headlining and all that, he would have to be over you in order to give you a chance. Mm. And again, we're going to show you the bias that the black woman has to deal with. How does a man that was part of the kings of comedy, who was considered the opening act, the, the opening act, and there's no shade to the opening act. You need to have them. They set the tone of the show. He was very key to what it is that was the kings of comedy. But number two, why won't any of those people face me? Why won't any of them say, this is what the difficulty was? Because what they do is bank on our community just going along with the foolishness. And we oblige. We jump right on the bandwagon. That's why they're able to exploit us. That's why they're able to take advantage of us. Because what they know is they ain't going to stand together. And when in the history of entertainment or anything else, have there been a barrage of black women trying to exploit society as we know? The black woman has been the bearer of protection and services for the white man, the white woman, a black man. And as I've said before, who's been the one that's looked out for her historically? She's had to look out for herself and Black women get looked out for so little that it is, it appears to be an egregious act when a black woman says, I've got to stand up for myself. And a black ass husband gonna sit there right with him. That, Come on that, now, that, that nigga, daddy. That nigga. When y'all make comments about. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to I Smoke Hip Hop Live. We're watching a great thing that's going on we're seeing transparency basically on both sides i'll be fair but monique and her husband aka daddy they dropping some bombshells right now and receipts and everything is important man i need y'all to go hit that like button man go hit that notification bell for the youtube channel subscribe make sure you subscribe and also hit the notification bell salute gang <laughs>